And so just what I'm just sharing is the, the is only the, from the past, when we look at the past in this country as African Americans, as terrible as things might seem today, there has been a path, there has been a way that, that we came that was very successful, okay? So, so we, had, we had battles and we had deaths and, and, and we had casualties, but then we, we took ground. And we battled again, and we had deaths, we had casualties, but we took more ground. So all along this process, since slavery, it has been a slow process. And there have been battles, and there have been casualties, and there have been progress, okay? And that's, and that's where we are today, recognize that. And, and so, so, so why, why were there battles you know, after, the, after the slaves were released? Why were the battles even during the slave you know, time and all that stuff? Why, what was all that conflict about? And conflict about was because people were getting educated. They were beginning to read. They were beginning to realize that they were no different than these people that had enslaved them and that it was ridiculous for them to be slaves in this society when they should be just as free as the people who were enslaving them. That, that was the reason that the slaves were being killed because they were reading, because they were coming, you know, alive. They were coming uh, uh, mentally and they were recognizing things that shouldn't be and they were not willing to stand up for. And as so what I'm suggesting today is we need to learn. See, one of the detriments of our of our of, of the black folks in this nation over all these years is 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 our complacency, is our partying, is, is our you know once we leave school or even while we're in school, our determination not to read a book <laughs> or read a newspaper or or even even you know continue our education or do anything that will better ourselves to to set up the betterment of our children to even be better than us. We're complacent. We're satisfied. And so we're not going anywhere. We're not being educated. We're not continuing that path of education, that path of not being satisfied with your current position, that path of continuing to better yourself and for your children and their children and their children. So when something goes down like this, like these police start killing folks, we don't know what to do because we are not on that path. We're like that tortoise. And, and the hair, you know, in that race, where we were the hair, we were getting speed, we were moving along. See, what I see even in this race is that, remember that race of the tortoise and the hare? Where, where the, the hare was way faster than this, than this turtle, the rabbit was faster than the turtle. And so he knew he was going to win this race. So they start off and he was like, whoosh, he was way, that turtle was just walking along slowly. And then the, the hare, the, the rabbit decided, I'm just going to take a rest, take a nap, just chill out, man. While he was chilling out and just relaxing, that turtle just kept his steady pace, steady pace. And he passed by the snowing rabbit. The rabbit finally woke up. That turtle was right by the finish line. But, and he was running, almost caught him. But just before that rabbit caught him, that turtle just crawled right on that finish line and won that race. What I'm going to suggest today is that we have been in this race. And that tortoise, that turtle, is the negativity. Is racism, is prejudice, is all the, the evil and pains used against black folks in this nation. And, and that rabbit, that is, that is the hair, that is the, the progress, that is the momentum that black folks have, 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 have had since emancipation, you know, through Jim Crow, through the civil rights movement, through all the struggles, through all the deaths. We, we have been surpassing that slow moving tortoise of racism and prejudice way up front. But, but we got to a point where we got complacent. We thought everything was okay, and so we can chill. We can get high. We can party a lot. I was at work the other day. This guy was talking about other folks because he thought he could dance better than somebody else in the office. I'm like, that's where his mind, you know, everybody in there is like over 40. And he's like talking about, no, I bet you can't. He's doing something with his foot or something with his hand. How stupid is that? I mean, we're in this place where, where people or black folks are being killed right now. Our situation is so jacked up, and we are so ignorant that we're, we're trying to learn new dance moves. Now, where is that at? Where are we going tonight? Where are we going out tonight? What are we going to do? And, and so we're like that, that hare, that, that rabbit that's just sleeping, although there was so much momentum behind us, so many sacrifices, the Martin Luther Kings, the Stokely Carmichael's, the Malcolm X's, the Medgar Evers. That, I mean, all these guys that have sacrificed before us, we were on a momentum. We were going somewhere, but then we got cool. Then we were chilling, and we decided to rest. And that steady evil of racism, of prejudice, of negativity toward black folks just kept on going. We're finally waking up to the point where you don't even wake up from a deep sleep and you don't even know where or who you are. That's where we're at right now because we have not been running that race that was started before us. And that tortoise, that, the prejudice, the racism, the hate, and the negativity, which we had far surpassed in, 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 in our speed, okay, has passed us by and now we are victims to it and it's crossing the line right now. We're just sitting here scratching our heads 
and wonder what happened, how we dropped the baton of the people that had sacrificed so much before us, okay? That's all I'm saying. I know that's a little harsh. So, so recognize it. So what do we do now? We just need to get it back together. Because what I want to suggest today, that tour is, isn't that far ahead, <laughs> as it is in the story that we told or the fable that we've been passed down as kids. That, that we just need to come to the point, do what we need to do, look back the history, what did they do? They read books. They got educated. They weren't begging the perpetrators of the ills to please stop hurting us. Come on now. That, when is that ever worked? <laughs> oh, black lives matter. They do matter, but not to those folks. They just matter to you. So what are you going to do about it? And don't look back and say, all oh, these black people are killing each other. Forget that too. Everything, it seems we, we just, we're like that cat, you know, where you can have a light and you can shine it over here. It's going to jump after the light, shine it over here, jump out. There ain't nothing really there, but we just chase after any kind of thing. So we're chasing after the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, Black Lives Matter. Really? And then on the other hand, we got black folks that are saying, well, why are we killing each other then? You know, we just, we, we cannot seem to focus on that thing which will make us well. Okay, it's all I'm saying. Just look back. Read a book. Get educated. Stop being like that here. Stop laying around. Stop chilling. Stop having fun like everything is cool. Recognize you're in this race against racism. And we're the ones that allowed this to happen. Now, <laughs> let me stop being so harsh. Let me give you the good news, okay? The good news, if you take advantage of it, that that illness had been simmering within us all this time, in this body all this time. And, and Obama brought it to surface, got them so mad. You know, we get to see the reality of what's really been under the surface. We, all we got to see is, is, it, or is the actual disease that has always been there, okay? And the only way you can cure a disease, you can't cure a disease if you don't know it's there, okay? And so we know it's there, and it's simmering. So Obama was just that thing that brought it to the surface. And this is the way it is. This is the, the disease, what we're experiencing right now. It's not like it hasn't been there. It's just the disease. So what are we going to do about it? How do you fight this type of disease? You just you read a book. You get at, First, you stop partying. Stop drinking. Stop getting high. This is not a time for that. I was telling some young brothers, we were on this process. We were trying to do something in the community. I said, first, you've got to stop drinking, stop getting high. Well, they quit, okay? What I'm suggesting today is whatever happens, if, 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 if what happens happens because we don't do what we're supposed to do, we just crying and begging and belly aching, putting pictures on the internet saying, see, look what they're doing. How come they do this to us and didn't do it to him? What does that do? Nothing. That's not progress. That's just frustration. See, see, see revealing the illness and not taking steps to cure the illness, should, I'd rather just not know I have the illness and just die of it one day. If I'm not going to take advantage of, of, of what I need to do and the time I have and what I need to do to fix it, I'd just rather not know. Quit posting those pictures on the Internet if you don't have a plan. Quit posting those pictures on the Internet if you don't have a solution. That's just causing more frustration and no, and no response and nothing positive. It's time. It's time to stop partying. It's time to stop smoking weed, stop drinking. <laughs> it's time to get educated and, and get armed legally. I know black folks are being killed that are armed legally, but still, don't let that prevent you from getting armed legally. Take advantage of the situation, and, and if you feel like it, don't keep it on you. Just keep keep it somewhere. Get armed legally and stand, and stand your own ground when the time comes. That's it. It's education. It's education. It's education. What does the scripture say? My, the my people perish because of their lack of knowledge. That's what scripture tells us. I think it's in the book of Daniel. My people are destroyed, are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. It's not the illness's fault. These, these God-ordained authorities, they'll be punished. Okay. But what, in the meantime, because when they kill the body, they die with the body, okay? And they don't realize that, that, they, that they are killing themselves as they're killing us, okay? But, but how do we keep ourselves? How do we keep ourselves well? Get educated. Quit partying. Man, you stop partying. Stop getting high. Your eyes will get clear. When your eyes get clear, your thoughts will get clear. And when your thoughts get clear, you have a better game plan. You'll wake up and wake out of that slumber that that rabbit was sleeping. And realize that the power resides within you. 
And that's all this message is. It may not even sound spiritual today, but it is a spiritual message. It's how do you fight a carnal battle spiritually? Well, the first thing you have to do is wake up. Wake up and realize how messed up this thing is and you have at your fingertips the ability to fix it. Quit getting high. Get educated. Be a good example to your kids. Be home more. Quit going out so much. Quit going. Where are you even going out? Where are we spending our money? We're spending our money in clubs, in nightclubs. We're spending our money gambling. We're spending our money on unhealthy foods. We're spending our money on alcohol, on weed. Where are we spending our money? We need to take this time to get ourselves healthy, mentally, emotionally, physically, get ourselves educated, get ourselves armed legally, and, and then we'll be in a position to take what is ours. I don't mean through violence. Obama didn't take the presidency through violence. He stopped getting high. <laughs> he got educated. He certainly got armed when he was running for office because they sure gave him some secure, some uh, the secret service. And he took what was his. Do you think, he, he, from a historical perspective, do you think in this nation at any time a black man, you had, he had to take what was his. He had, had to go, he didn't just, they didn't just give it to him. He had to go against all those Republican, I mean, uh, first of all, he had to go against Democratic challengers, Biden and, and Hillary and, and all those other folks. Then he had to go against the Republican challengers twice. He just didn't, he had to take what he was his. If he had been getting high and smoking weed and drinking a lot of alcohol, he would have never, he would have never made it. If he hadn't gotten his education, he would have never made it. Because of education, and Michelle, everybody loves Michelle. He, he got educated. He met a woman who was educated. See, we're sitting here, we're wondering why our relationships don't work. Because, because we're, we're going in the club, and we're meeting somebody when we got a buzz, and they got a buzz. Then we go home with them, wake up in the morning, might spend a couple months with them, maybe, or a one-night stand. And then this woman's wondering, well, how come, you know, this man, how, you know, how, man, it's not like, what do you expect is going to happen? Get your stuff together. Be the best that you can be, and you will begin attracting people who are the best that they can be. That right there is some common sense that won't come while you get in the buzz, okay? That's what I'm talking about. When you stop doing the things you're not supposed to be doing, you begin to think clearer. You begin to make better decisions, and you begin to be attracting like-minded people. You wonder why you can't find nobody? Because <laughs> maybe you're not nobody that needs to be found right now. Get yourself together, okay? Begin to challenge and question what you think. How, and even your ex exercise, get yourself in shape. Start eating right. You know, get healthy. Get in shape. Slim down. Get it together. I mean, come on now. Look, look, look. This is what I'm going to close with. About four years ago, I had this terrible abdominal injury. And I was in, I, would, I mean, I've always been in pretty good shape because of the nature of my job, but I still, you know, wasn't really exercising all that much. I wasn't doing anything. I thought I had a hernia. A couple people thought I had a hernia, okay? A couple of medical type people, you know, medics in the military thought I had a hernia and I should go to the doctor, but I wasn't going to the doctor. Not make sure that I couldn't fix myself, okay? So I decided, I came to this point where I figured the, that my whole body was in good condition except for like 5% of my body and that was right there in my abdomen. So I was going to start exercising better, eating better, because I figured that I would just exercise everything, the 95% of me, that was okay. And it was a struggle. Certain moves I would make, I was hurting, it was hurting, it was hurting. But eventually, after one month, two months, five months, six months, of exercising all that I had control over, it eventually took over and corrected this abdominal issue that I have. I'm not saying that's all issues in your life, but I'm using that as, as sort of an example in life, that, that instead of lamenting about the things that are messed up, the illnesses that we see, begin to affect everything that you can put your hand to and strengthen that and make that stronger. And eventually, I'm saying, 
and we'll begin to fix the other situations and issues that we see in our lives. But I'm saying, you know, we're right, right now we are in a very vulnerable position as black folks. <laughs> we're not reading books. We're not getting art. We're not getting educated. We're, you know, we're not doing it. We're just getting high, getting the buzz, enjoying ourselves, not eating right. We're out of shape. We're unhealthy. All this kind of stuff, man. We have so many things about our lives that we can affect, that we can get our, put our hands on that we can fix. But we spend our time lamenting about the things that are out of our control. Come on, those things are happening. Just begin to get yourself together. And if that stuff will clear up. Those illnesses will clear up if you stay focused and make sure and take care of the rest of your body and keep yourself healthy. And I think that's from, from a biblical perspective. Because nowhere in Scripture do we find any time, anywhere a situation was totally perfect. But there was still always that hope. We talk about in Hebrews, what they call the faith of, you know, the hall of faith. You know, all those people that they begin to name off. That, that they saw afar. You know, the, the, what the manifestation of their reward would be. But they didn't get to experience that reward yet. But they kept pressing forward. They kept pressing forward. And they were able to sacrifice through many things because they kept their eyes on the things that they could affect and they affected those things. They kept their eyes on the prize and it allowed them to get to that destination, if not in their natural life, in the natural lives of their children and their children's children. How's that? 